Uh, in our previous uh, lesson, uh, we did start with the introduction uh, to the taxation of the business income, where we learned about the methods that are used to determine the taxable income. And one thing uh, we learned about uh, that lesson is that uh, there are two very important items that you need to know whenever you want to tax any business. One of them was about the incomes and the other one was about the expenses. When it comes to the incomes, we must be able to differentiate between the taxable incomes of the business and non-taxable incomes of the business. Uh, we must also be able to differentiate between allowable expenses of the business and non-allowable expenses of the business. So in today's lesson, we are going to learn more about those incomes, taxable, non-taxable, expenses, allowable and non-allowable expenses of the business. So here we are, we start with the business incomes. And as I have mentioned, we need to differentiate between two, one, the taxable business income, business incomes, and two, non taxable business incomes. So we'll start with the first one, the taxable. business incomes. Now we ask ourselves, what are these taxable incomes? These are the incomes of the business that are supposed to be charged tax. Now, when you are looking at the gross profit method, we saw that once you get the gross profit of the business for a trading business, you normally add the taxable incomes of the business. So meaning, those are the incomes that you're supposed to charge tax. So what are those taxable incomes? There are several. We start with the first one. We have incomes from selling of goods and services. Now, one thing we learned about goods is that these are the items you deal in in the business. For example, if you are in the business of selling computers, the income that you get from selling computers is supposed to be a taxable income because that is your core business. If you are in the business of selling motor vehicles, motor vehicles become your goods, your stocks, your inventories. Income you get from selling of those stocks is supposed to be a taxable income. If you are in the business of offering services, the income or the amount you charge for the offering of that service is an income to the business. And this we are saying it's supposed to be a taxable income. So income number one, is that from selling of goods and services. Two, we have compensation from insurance companies for loss of stock or profits. So, we refer back to what we have said here. Income from selling of goods is a taxable income because goods are the items you deal with in the business. Now, sometimes you can buy your goods. You put them in a warehouse. Then thieves come and steal them. Or fire can break out and burn all your goods. Now, if you had insured those goods with an insurance company, you don't have to worry. You just need to report to the insurance company. Insurance company will just tell you to fill in the claim form and they'll pay you that amount you have lost. When you receive it to the taxman, that is supposed to be a taxable income. Same case, 
you can insure your business against loss of profits. That in a given year, if you make a loss, they say, your business make a loss of 5 million. The insurance company will compensate you that 5 million. So when you get that money from the insurance company, it's an income to you and it's supposed to be a taxable income. Another income that you normally tax, number three, is the trade bad debts recovered, which were previously written off. What do we mean by that? Trade bad debts recovered, which were previously written off. Now, when you sell your goods on credit, you create people we call debtors. Debtors are the people who owe you money because they purchase from you on credit. Now, it is usually assumed in most cases in the business that when you sell your goods on credit, your debtors will pay within the period of which you sell those goods. Or if not, probably within a year, they're going to pay you. But sometimes, you can sell goods on credit, expect that your debtors are going to pay within a year. Then they take longer than a year. They take two, three, two years, three years, four years, or five or even ten years. Now, in taxation, if a customer takes four years without paying you, the taxman allow you to deduct that as a loss. And a loss is an expense to the business after four years. Now, assume that you write off after four years an amount worth 10 million because data have refused to pay. Then after that, you forget about it. After, let's say, 10 years, this data remembers you and bring your 10 million. It's something that you have forgotten. You wrote off. Now you have recovered that. That is what we call bad debts recovered. Now, the one we tax is the trade. It means it's a data from what you do on a daily basis. For example, if you are in the business of selling computers, you had sold computer to a customer who is now a data and they refuse to pay you. Then later on they come and pay you. When they pay you, that is a recovered debt and it is a taxable income. Later on in a while, when we start looking at the non-taxable income, we will learn non trade bad debt recovered are not taxable. But we'll talk about them when we get there. The fourth taxable income is what we call realized foreign exchange gain. So the key thing there being realized foreign exchange gain. Realized. Now, foreign exchange gain no matter arise if you deal in foreign currency. That sometimes you can sell your goods to customers outside the country. So they pay you in foreign currency. They say dollars, Ugandan shilling, Tanzania shillings. Now, you can sell your goods on credit that are worth, let's say, 10 million. So, in Kenya shillings, it's 10 million. Then the customer pay you in dollars. Now, when you are paid in dollars, because your business is resident in the country, in Kenya, you may need to convert those dollars to Kenya shilling. So, the goods were worth 10 million. Customer pay you in dollar. When you are converting, instead of getting the 10 million, because of changes in foreign currency, exchange rate, you get more. So, you may get, for example, 11 million. That one extra one million you have generated is an income to you which you didn't expect to get. Now, we are saying that is the foreign exchange gain. Where does the realize come in? Now, if you have already converted your dollars to Kenya shillings and you have one extra million in your pocket in Kenya shilling, that is what we call realized foreign exchange gain. But... If you are still holding on to your dollars, but you are saying that if I convert these dollars to Kenya shilling, according to the current exchange rate, I'm going to get one extra million Kenya shilling. But you haven't done that. 
we call that unrealized foreign exchange gain. And we are going to learn unrealized foreign exchange gain is usually not a taxable income. That is the fourth taxable income. We go to the fifth taxable income. We call it decrease in specific provision for bad debts. So we are talking about decrease in specific provision for bad debt. First, where does the provision for bad debts come in? It normally comes in when you assume that your debtors are not going to pay. For example, when you sell goods on credit worth 50 million, we said you create debtors. Now, it is always expected that those debtors are not going to pay. But you can have some doubt. Say, the way I'm seeing things, these debtors may not be able to pay. When you do that, you are creating something we call provision. That they may not be able to pay. Now, in taxation, we have two types of provision. We have one we call general provision. And the other one is specific provision. General provision is when you estimate that given number of debtors are not going to pay. For example, if I say 10% of my debtors are not going to pay. 10%. I'm not picking the ones that are not going to pay and giving a reason. I'm just estimating. Maybe from my experience, 10% of my debtors do not pay. So when I do that, I'm creating a general provision. Now, when it comes to the specific provision, it's when you have a reason to, uh, to say these people are not going to pay. For example, if your debtors are declared bankrupt, see, only a court can declare a person bankrupt. So if a court has declared a one of your data, a bankrupt person, that now you can be sure that that money you may not be able to get. That is when we say specific provision, that this person is not going to pay. Another one is when your data dies. If your data dies, you have a reason to say, this one may not be able to pay me. Because most of the time, you find that those who own the business control the whole of the business. So when they pass on, you find that maybe that business may not be able to survive for long. So when you do that, we call that specific provision for bad debt. Now, in taxation, we normally look at the change in specific provision for bad debt. Change in that, we look at specific provision at the start of the year. How much were the specific provision? If you had specific provision of, let's say, 10 million, and then when you get to the end of the year, you find that the specific provision has shifted, has changed. And now you are saying 8 million are the one that I might not be able to pay because of the reason I have given. The change here, the 2 million, is the decrease in specific provision for bad debt. Now, to the taxman, that decrease of 2 million is supposed to be a taxable income. So, specific provision for bad debt, another taxable income. From there, we have the sixth. We have the sixth taxable income. Uh, we have the, the uh, creditors. Discount received from creditors. Creditors are the people you owe money. For example, when you purchased your goods on credit, we call those people creditors. You could have purchased goods on credit worth 20 million. And you agree with those suppliers, you are creditors now, that you are going to pay them in six months time. Now, uh, 5 million to be paid in six months time. You may find that in two months time, your supplier, your creditor call you and they tell you, you owe us 5 million. If you pay us now, we can accept 4 million from you instead of the 5 million. And we're going to consider that your debt is cleared. If you pay them the 4 million, it's kind of you gain. 
Because in six months' time, you are supposed to part with five. Now you are paying four. That one million to the taxman is an income. And it is supposed to be a taxable income. The discount received from the creditors. Oh, these are the taxable incomes of the business. Thank <laughs> you.